When it comes to judging players in the AFL, I've got a big problem with the amount that these organizations are labeling players stars, superstars, and even legends sometimes. It doesn't sit well with me at all. So when I talk about A graders, I really do mean the best of the best. I've got six players that I think can really take that jump and become A graders in the AFL by the end of 2024. And I want to talk about them, so let's do it. Let's kick things off with Adelaide small forward Isaac Rankin, who I've got to be honest, I was a massive doubter until about round four of this year, to be honest, thinking he was your one and a half highlights a game and that was it. Now, he still showed some of those signs, but I think his game became a lot more well-rounded in the last 15, 16 weeks of 2023, and I think he can take that to another level in 2024. Now, some of this needs to come towards Matthew Nix, because you just need to play this man in center bounces more and more. Yes, he might not have the tank for it, but look at what Cyril used to do for the Hawks in the mid to late 2010s. He was only attending like two or three center bounces a game, but it broke it up. You can't play Laird, Dawson, Crouch, Sloan in the midfield the entire time. Yes, you've got Rankin, Rochelle, Lukey, Pedler, now Charlie Edwards, who you've just drafted for the generation next. But the generation now could be a really exciting and very flexible and versatile midfield with Rankin in there, as well as the goals that he can produce. They don't need to go as far as Richmond have with Shea Bolton for mine, as he still needs to be a forward pocket. They can go into the midfield a little bit, but I would be looking at how Sydney used Tom Papley in the last 10 weeks of last year, and that is what Isaac Rankin can be. There is no doubt at all, in my opinion, that Tom Papley is an A-grade small forward, and if Rankin can follow a similar path, he will get there. Nick Martin for the Bombers. I know, I know, he was amazing last year. And I'm putting him on the precipice of A-graders. All right, so Bombers fans don't think that I think he's coming from a long way back. He's not. He's close. He's not there yet. My God, he'll get there very quickly, though. This could be a case of he has a fantastic first month of the season and this conversation is over. But there was a little bit of a dip in the last couple of months of the year, as there was with Essendon as a whole, that just has me leaving him off the A-grade list for the Bombers. And there is an argument to be made that Zach Merritt is the only one. Peter Wright, maybe. Jordan Ridley, nearly there. And it's just all about getting that talent through. Parrish at his best, absolutely. Maybe he needs to go to another level to get there. Who knows? But Zach Merritt is definitely there. And everyone else is a question mark. By the end of 2024, or I believe at some point through the first half of 2024, Nick Martin's name can be added with no argument at all. Next up, Fremantle's Hayden Young. Again, this is with a stipulation. Get him off the halfback flank. Sarong, Brayshaw, Young. They're your three best mids. Play them as your three best mids. Matt Johnson and Nathan O'Driscoll on your wings. Heath Chapman can play the Hayden Young role. Down back. <laughs> Sorted. Can you try Cooper Simpson on another wing? Can you try Neil Erasmus as your half forward other winger now that Liam Henry is no longer there? I don't care. But Hayden Young's a midfielder. He's got the size. He's got the foot skills. He's got the core strength. Train him as a midfielder all preseason. Get him in the midfield. Now, I know there's a lot of super coach and uh, dream team or AFL fantasy players that are thinking the same thing, just get him in the midfield. That's not why I'm saying this. It's really not. He probably becomes very awkward to put in your super coach defense. And that's not what this video is about. But if you want this man to be a genuine A-grader and you have an A-grade midfield, get him in there. Ham Brayshaw on the outside. Sarong is your two-way midfielder. Good as gold. Good as gold. Make it happen and you will have an A-grader on your hands. Gold Coast's Bailey Humphrey. The least experienced player on this list. And I was very skeptical about putting guys who have played under that 30-game threshold on this list. But my God, my God, my God, my God. Bailey Humphrey is just doing amazing things. Richmond under Damian Hardwick didn't really have half-forward flankers. Yes, they had guys in those spots, but they weren't really half-forward flankers. Shane Edwards was playing as a more a centre-half forward role. Shea Bolton was rotating through the midfield anyway. If you can get Bailey Humphrey in some centre bounces, along with Tuke Miller and your Sam Flanders, yes, please. He's got the power. He's got the strength. Is it a year too early? Potentially. This is probably my most riskiest pick, but you got to risk it to get the biscuit sometimes. I love this kid. 
Love, love, love what he can do. And if anyone is poised for a breakout year at the Suns, it's this man. Dimmer, I think, can use him right. And if everything does go right for him in 2024, look out. Next up, the man in the thumbnail, Jai Newcomb, which I know Hawthorne fans are going to really freak out about. But if we assume Jai is the best midfielder at the Hawks, right? Will Day, we'll call him your hybrid. Like your Sean Burgoyne. Like, Burgoyne wasn't a defender. He wasn't a midfielder. He wasn't a forward in his, you know, Hawthorne reign. He was just wherever the hell Clarko wanted to put him, and he did it all beautifully. I think Will Day is the same. So just work with me here. Jai is the number one midfielder at Hawthorne. How many other number one midfielders at other clubs is Jai better than? The list is not that high. How many could he be better than at the end of 2024? Who knows? But if he keeps taking the seismic leaps that we have seen him take, why wouldn't he be considered amongst the top midfielders in the game? Yes, he did very well on Brownlow night. Another seismic leap would see him pushing top 10, top 8, top 6. Would be amazing. Would be incredible, but if you just go through the number one mids at other clubs, and I'm probably going to screw this up because it is off the top of my head, but Lawson, uh, Lawson, there you go, there's a start. Dawson or Laird, I don't think you're having Jai ahead of them. Lockie Neal, no. Cripps Walsh, neither of those two. Nick Dacos, no. Zach Merritt, probably not. Caleb Sarong, I mean, based on last year, Sarong's still a little bit ahead of him. I don't think Geelong have got a midfielder right now you take over Jai. Yes, Dangerfield's older, Duncan, Guthrie, I know that. I still think, and youth does have something to do with it, you are taking Jai. Tuke Miller, no. Kelly, Josh Kelly, no. Tom Green, if you want to consider him the number one at the Giants. Probably not. Probably not. Petrarca or Oliver, no. Luke Davies, Uniac, if they both played 22 games. I don't think so. Davies, Uniac could win the Brownlow this year. I can't see Jai doing that. Butters or Rosie? Probably not. Now, Tim Taranto? Yes, I'm taking Jai over Timmy T. Timmy T does hit the scoreboard a bit more. Jai's a better kick of the footy. Give me the better ball user all day long. Jack Steele, considering how far he came back last year, I think that's a serious conversation. I probably would take Jai at this point. Not all time. Don't freak out. But for this year... Probably Brad Crouch, I'd probably still take Jai, so he's got the Saints covered there. Errol Goulden, no. Chad Warner, conversation to be had. Who knows? Tim Kelly, yes, at the Eagles. Bont, no. So you're probably looking at, at best, four. He's better than most play, uh, most club's second best midfielders. I don't think we can deny that. If we put Will Day one, he's better than most second midfielders in the competition that to me is not a grader just yet just yet by the end of the year me every other Hawthorne fan are going to sit back to everyone that's doubted that he'd make that jump and I think Matty Lloyd is definitely one of them I think he said something uh, that did go not viral but one of those clickbaity quotes but I think Jai will get there I really do think that He's on the precipice. He's not there yet. My God, by the end of 2024, he will be. And I cannot wait for it. And last but not least, Marcus Winhager. Shout out to the first subscriber of this channel and longtime channel supporter, Smithy. He loves this man. Loved him in his draft year. Was chewing my ear off about him. Made me pay attention to him. And it's coming true. He was recently given Danny Frawley's number two, which is amazing. I love that show of faith. I don't know whether you've seen his preseason picks or not, but... He's making me hate myself in a really body positive way. Not in an angry way or anything like that. Jealous? <laughs> yes. Look at him. But his ball his ball use is pretty good. But his awareness is great. His intangibles are fantastic. His footy IQ is awesome. The only thing that could possibly let him down is that the Saints are going to obviously stubbornly go with Steel, Crouch, Sinclair as their main midfielders, as they should. But this guy needs a chance to explode. You've still got Mateus Filippo, who I think will still stay on a half-forward flank this year, mostly keep developing. He's got that body frame. He's got not really the size width-wise yet to really be that awesome midfielder. But if you tell me in the next four years, Marcus Winhager, Mateus Filippo, and Jack Sinclair... And Nozaya Wanganin Miller are potentially, if they want to move him into that role, is the generation next midfield for the Saints. 
beautiful. I love this man. Not as much as Smithy does, but I love this man. What do you guys think? They are my six players that I can see becoming A graders in 2024. Do you want a part two for this list? Because there are plenty of guys that didn't make the cut. Comment below. Let me know if you agree, disagree, all that good shit. Like the video. If you like the video, subscribe to join the Daz Talks Footy family. I'll speak to you very soon. Goodbye.